Today's Gospel reading is Matthew 11, 2 through 11. When John heard in prison what Christ was doing, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and what you see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, and those who have leprosy are cured. The deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you go out into the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you the truth, among those born of women, there has not been risen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the voice of the Lord, and herein lies our trust. You know, in preparing um, for Advent, you know, I thought about, um, you know, I think about my life and and the joy, and and, and certainly when I was a kid, um, me and my brother that I talked about today were were very different, like, um, you know, as far as disciplinary ways. You know, if I was in trouble, you know, mom's like, oh, well, you know, you're grounded. I'd be like, woohoo. You know, because I really enjoyed my company. You know, I I could always find something to do in my room. Like that was, you know, that was, you know, there was always something to do. Like I had, you know, there was toys. I could, you know, draw. I could think. I could sing. There were so many things, and so I could always find joy in that. You know, but if you showed me the belt, <laughs> I was running. Don't hit me. Not the face. Not the face. But um, but you know, but that's how it was when I was a kid. My my brother was the exact opposite. You know, he's like, well, you know, I'd rather, you know, endure some some swats, you know, and then go out and play because that's how he was. But it was very different. But, you know, I could find the joy in being cooped up in my room. And so, you know, that is one of the things that I absolutely admire about the Apostle Paul is that he could find the joy in captivity. And the fact that he wrote the book of Colossians, Philemon, Ephesians, and Philippians all during his imprisonment in Rome is an amazing feat. The fact that he could give us so much truth and, and also inspiring scriptures that are carrying us for eternity is amazing to me all while in prison knowing knowing the, the, the fate of people that have been there before him he still was able to tap into the spirit to bring out that joy and so in today's gospel John the Baptist who once prepared the way has seemed to have lost his way He finds himself in prison and he was locked up by King Herod because he disapproved of his divorce and his new marriage. And so John the Baptist, after preaching so boldly, so faithfully, and after paving the way, after, you know, baptizing so many people, including Jesus Christ, he looks around and he sees darkness, he sees his hands in chains, dangers, toils, solitude. And so he must have thought, well, how in the world did I get here? You know, I'm sure that this isn't the way that he thought it would work out. You know, life is never predictable. Not then, not now, and not even for a prophet of the Lord. So certainly it isn't for us. And so in prison in those times, it did not have, you know, the luxuries that it has today. I bet you couldn't get a degree in the things that they offer today. But based on on the words of John the Baptist in today's gospel, we can tell that John's spirit seems to begin to fade a little bit. And the hopelessness of his cell, he's becoming downtrodden. You know, it's fading a little bit. And he's come, become discouraged by the predicament and the situation that he was in. You know, what do I do now? He must have thought. And so oftentimes, we find ourselves feeling like John the Baptist. We, you know, like in the things that we've heard today in the joys and concerns. Oftentimes, we get stuck in our very own prisons. Locked up by the situations that we are facing in our lives. Because life has a way of surrounding us with difficulties with challenges, with struggles that cause our hopes to be shaken, tribulations that cause our souls to take a deep, deep sigh. These moments of despair will come. These moments of despair have come. And so, you know, as we've seen here, a lot of us have been there. Some of us are there now. Some of you are there now. You know, we find ourselves dealing with with friends that are ill. Cancer is running, running rampant in our community. We lose people that we love. Youth that we love and care for get lost. 
they get lost, they turn to drugs, suicide, all kinds of things are happening. And all these things have a profound effect upon our lives whenever the people that we care about are hurting. And so we have to know that as we go through these circumstances that we are not alone, that we are all going through these things. And so, you know, for me personally, you know, I've lived through many, many everyday prisons in my life. You know, I've, I've lost actually two partners. I've never shared that with you. But one in particular that was, you know, long term that meant a lot to me that, um, that I've lost. But, you know, it was hard. It was difficult. It's difficult to lose the people that we love. Along the way, you know, there was many times where I suffered through, through addiction for years and years throughout that, trying to cope, trying to get through it. I've lost my father. I've lost a three-year-old niece. You're not alone. We're not alone in this. And so these moments are inevitable in our lives. Difficulties are a certainty. And so like John the Baptist of our lives, you know, our hopes can sometimes fade with the things that are happening. And so what do we do about it? Let's look into the gospel today and see what John did about it. Verse 2, John the Baptist sends word out to Jesus. He reached out to the man that he prepared the way for. And that is what we must do. Reach out to the man that we prepared the way for in our hearts already. And so, you know, when we find ourselves in trouble, when we find ourselves in a prison of hopelessness, we must reach out to Christ. Like John, we must send word to him. And so how do we do that today? It's through that almighty gift of prayer that we've been given. We send word. We call for help. We ask for answers. The call of today's gospel is for us to find joy by reaching out to God regardless of what life throws in it. Regardless of whatever bars we find ourselves behind. Because although you know our, our, our bodies and our physical bodies can be held captive, but our spirit must never be. It is free. It can always be free. And so John the Baptist today in the gospel, you know, he asks Jesus, he says, you know, you know, are you the one to come or should we expect someone else? And that was amazing to me every time I read that because John, you know, who watched the Holy Spirit descend as a dove upon Jesus in the River Jordan. John, who heard the voice of God say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased, now asks, should we expect someone else? Facing the darkness of prison, John's humanity reared its head and showed itself. He questions. And sometimes, you know, in the face of adversity, we find ourselves asking questions. And so as Christians, do you think it's okay to question things? You know, some churches and faiths are certainly going to tell you, no, you just believe. No. But I say, if you're asking God questions, that means you are talking to Him, which is prayer. And God always wants that from us. You know, but what does the scripture say about it? Let's look to see. In James chapter 1, it says that any, if any of you lacks any wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given unto you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. You see, God wants you to come to Him with your questions, especially when your hope is frail, because He knows that that is a time when we need Him the most. And we must understand that when we ask, it must be believing. Otherwise, it's just hot, unanswered air going into the clouds. We must believe. And if we pray with a faith, no matter how small, He will answer, because God never sends a thirsty soul to a dry well. Never. He will always give you drink through His Word, through His Spirit, and through His love, and through the truth that lies inside of you. And that includes John the Baptist, who asks, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus answers his call. He says, Am I the one? Look around at all of the miracles sweeping across the land. I am the one. Rest assured that it's me. He sends his disciples to tell John that. And so Christ is saying to you, if you're questioning today in any way, in anything, Jesus is answering you through today's gospel. Christ says, look around your life. Behold the miracles that are sweeping through your life. And ask the question again. 
am I the one? He is the one. Because those miracles in your life would not be possible without Him. He is the one. You know, we know that you know, in our lives, we, we, it's evident through the toys, the, the generosity we see, it's through all the things that we do, that lives are changed, that, that people get fed, that hopes are renewed, that kindness is shared, that heaven is granted, that joy is restored. And so, you know, we got, must cling to the fact that God is never going to send us to an empty well. He's always going to give us drink. And so, you know, this Christmas season, more than ever, Jesus Christ will lead you and He will comfort you no matter what you're going through. He will encourage you. He will strengthen you. And He will steady your hand. So get ready because His birth is coming. His birth is coming and it's an opportunity for your rebirth in whatever way in your life you need it. So... You know, you, we must allow ourselves to, to really take part in that Advent. Because Advent Sunday, joy is abounding. And it's something that we carry with us. It's in our hearts, and it's in our minds, and it's in our life. And so, the good news of the Gospel today is that God frees you from any prison that holds you back today. Through His Son, you can receive all the blessings that He has ordained for your specific life. He has a plan for each of you. Find out what it is, and you do that by sending word. And so today we celebrate John the Baptist and the authority in which he baptized so many. And it is with that joy that our fellow brothers and sisters come to be baptized in his presence and in your presence here today. This Advent, there is no better time to be reborn as Christ comes to be born unto us. You know, the scriptures today we read in Isaiah talks about the way of holiness. And this truly is one of the ways of holiness. And so baptism is about change and baptism is about commitment. And it stands as an outward expression of what is inwardly going on inside of us, inside of these, these brothers and sisters who sit here today. And so it is a peek into the state of one's heart. And so today we are peeking into your hearts. And that is how we will do our service today in that with, um, you know, becoming new people through the waters that we have a new life that is made available to us in Jesus. It opens the door, the floodgate, so that you can take part in your own refreshing. And so let the fresh, refreshing waters of today's service flow this truly, um, the table, the, the baptisms, are certainly an invitation to us all. And so today, I ask you to hear the words of Jesus, which is an invitation and promise again to us all. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew chapter 28. Well, my brothers and sisters who have sought God's promise of baptism, join me here along the altar.